What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will at the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel. We're online at www.whatsupinthesky.com and we are going to talk one more night here about ISON and a couple news articles I found about it. It looks like nobody is really sure what's going to happen. It's wonderful because everybody's, there's so much going on, there's so much debate, there's so much talking, not even just debate. I've noticed a lot more talking, civilized talking. Um, a lot of people have come to my channel just to talk about the symbology of the dates and how they think it is uh, more of like a conscious type awareness, not necessarily a uh, something that's going to come and zap the heck out of our power or something like that and put us out. But the the the, the people up there, and not just the the professionals, the amateur astronomers, majority of the people out there who actually know a, a little or two about astronomy, and I'm not one claiming I know a little bit about it. I've read up on it. I've actually never got the telescope and went out um, other than my little baby one, and that is something I'm going to do here, and I hope to, like I said, I've been talking about plans to do the channel. I'm looking into getting something like this over here, that big telescope, so we can do some of this stuff, and uh, you guys can have me get some coordinate. I, I just think it would open up a whole new interaction with the channel. Um, I've really fallen in love with uh, YouTube and the opportunities on it, not only the opportunities that afford me to make money, which which are there, um, but also to meet all these cool people and talk about stuff I've loved my whole life. These, the pictures and stuff from the moon and Mars, I just love. So anyway, let's get back to this. Let's do, this was a pretty neat thing. It was uh, written by Mike Wall, and he looks like he writes for uh, Wonder ground.com um, it's just a little uh, I guess it's a website I found this by just typing on Google and it came on up and I thought it was neat I wanted to read a couple little things out of it some of his uh, his facts about the trek and then I got one more for you and we'll let you guys go so and then I've got after that I think I might get to another couple Mars videos for you guys so alright Comet Ison barrel past Mars last week and it's way towards a close encounter with the Sun that has had scientists and sky watchers buzzing for a year that's because it's been uh, it's been a year since we found out about 2012 when we saw it so um, alright here's a lowdown on Comet Ison and its journey through the inner solar system which scientists are already observing with the far lengths of instruments ooh look at him getting all fancy with his words and grounds in space <laughs> it probably won't be the comet of the century so this is number one alright probably won't be the comet of the century but Comet Ison was tagged as the comet of the century and a candidate almost immediately after its discovery in September 2012 with some forecasting suggesting that it, with some forecast suggesting it could shine as brightly as the moon for late November and early December. All right, I'm not sure how they're still going with that. If that's still going to, I think most people pulled off of that. But either way, a spectacular show is certainly possible. Experts say, but Comet Ison probably won't live up to the most breathless hype. So I don't think we're going to get exactly what we were thinking there. Um, okay, number two, Ison is not huge. Based on much dust, how much dust Comet Ison is shedding, its core is likely between 0.12 miles and 1.2 miles across. All right, CIOC team members say. Other estimates have placed Ison's nucleus somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 miles. So that's a little bit of a difference there between the two, but still it's not a huge comet. So Ison appears to be an average-sized comet, or perhaps a bit smaller than average. It is certainly a far cry from the icy, uh, uh, giant ice, icy, the, I'm making words up as we go, the giant icy wonders like the 19-mile-wide uh, comet Hale-Bopp which uh, lit up the Earth's night skies during its past in 1997, which I remember at 17, it was cool. Uh, it, it was neat. I was 17 years old. I remember going out there looking at it, and it was just some, a good time. I had, it was right out in front of my uh, bedroom window every night. So, All right. There are many eyes on ice on three, and which is pretty neat. This is one thing I love about say I love the interaction with YouTube and stuff like that. So I'm really meeting so many people who are, who are bringing me along in so many different aspects of uh because i let you guys in i just don't read the news i let you guys into my life a little bit i talk you know that's why a lot of, some people come here and they don't like that you just go ahead and keep going you know what i mean because you don't know who i am or anything but if you invested some time in my channel you know who i am and uh you know you could help me out some because i'm really it's a learning experience for all of us here just because i post videos and some people don't doesn't mean anything i learn from all you guys and uh definitely you guys who come to my channel so all right so that's why i say three there are many eyes on ice on um, okay, most sun grazers pop into science's radar for the first time just hours before their solar encounters. But ISON will let them track the comet's evolution for a much longer period of time. That is pretty neat. Most of the sun grazers, they find them just as they come in and they only have a couple of days to watch it. So, uh, 
looks like they're just he just talks a little bit how they're all basically every single telescope we have from the European Space Agency to the even the stuff on Mars has been taking pictures of it. I mean we're really getting as many pictures as we can. So we we've fully documented this thing um, because it is such a rare opportunity, such a long trek of a of a you know a sun grazer. So number four, Comet Ison poses no threat to Earth. Earthlings have nothing to fear from Comet Ison, no matter how it behaves or approaches the sun. See? Ison will miss Earth by 40 million miles during its swing through the inner solar system, and so will its bits and pieces. As the sun's gravity happens to tear the comet apart little on the way, during a breakout, comet fragments don't fly off in different directions like shards in a cinematic explosion, explains a new Comet Ison video released by the operators of the Hubble Space Telescope. They break off but continue to travel along the path of their parent body, so any pieces would remain far from us, millions of kilometers away. Um, and then you might be able to see it soon. Like I said, today's the 10th, and nobody knows exactly how bright Comet Ison will get. But assuming it doesn't fizzle out badly, the comet may be visible in the backyard sky watchers through binoculars in late October. What a great birthday present. My birthday's coming on October 14th. Um, I'm definitely going to go get my uh, little telescope back from where I need to go pick it up uh, say, and start getting that again. But I'm looking into getting something. So you guys who do the telescopes and you guys who really are into this, hit me up. Well, you guys really want to help me out with my channel and something I, something that can be taped, something that can be uh, that can be shared with everybody here on YouTube. Uh, the, I, the, I have to talk to the guy, Jay, or the lady, J7409. They have a great channel. Um, I watched them for years. They got all sorts of good stuff and goodies. So I might probably talk to them over there. There, so, all right. Should we worry? Last one here, and this is a, just another, just another blog out there for space weather blog. Um, now, once again, it's another Thursday one. Should we worry about Comet Ison? And there's the. Uh, this was taken by the Gemini Multi-Object Spectrograph at the Gemini North. Hmm. There it is. What a beautiful. Uh, I guess that's one, two, three, four views of it. One, two, three, four. All right. Should we worry about Comet Ison? All right, by Glenn A. Walsh, and I'm just going to briefly do this because I thought some of this was kind of funny, a little amusing, say, because even some of us who are nervous about it, you know, the people out there, it, we we've been through this before, so we understand that we, you know, there's only so much to be nervous, but there's, I I think really we're we manifest our own destiny where we go from here, so I'm I'm thinking this is just going to be a beautiful sight. We're going to continue to keep changing, and, and we're going to really try to nail some of this stuff down and have a wonderful year coming up with all sorts of discoveries uh, especially on Mars maybe some actual real discoveries let's get the actual uh, get the word out to the public and uh, force some of this information out of the black ops and uh, maybe bring some of the technology that's along locked up with the information of life on other planets uh, life on Mars ex you know, ancient life even on our earth here and uh, get some of this technology that's been locked up because of it out and benefit humanity um, so should we worry about Comet Ison Friends of Zeus nonprofit organization which provides news and information to the public regarding astronomy space and related sciences as well as promoting the history and preservation of Pittsburgh original Bull Planetarium and Institute of Popular Science also provides a service which whereby the public can send electronic emails inquiring questions if you have on astronomy space Space and related sciences. So basically, this was something that, and this is what's happening to me because I'm getting a lot of people send. I tell you guys to email, email me your links, email me what you have questions with, you know. And if I can't answer them, I'll go look for you. And uh, you know, a lot of you email me. I email you back pretty quick if I can. I mean, I work, so I usually it's got to be after work or if I'm taking a break from work. I work from home a lot, so I've got I'm an IT director, so I've got it set up where I've got monitors everywhere. They follow me. I should have one attached to my arm that I can basically do stuff. So um, I'm getting this too. So let's see what we get here. Okay, this is uh, from Glenn A. Walsh. He, like I said, Glenn A. Welsh, and he uh, runs this site. He's a, a very good uh, said oh, This this site's pretty cool. His blog. I'm gonna link it down there. It's Space Watchtower. Um, in 1910, thousands of people were scared because the newspapers reported that the comet tail of Halley's Comet was partially composed of cyanide gas, would brush along the Earth's atmosphere, and the fear was that somehow the comet's tail would poison our atmosphere. Consequently, hucksters made money selling 
comet pills that were supposedly an antidote to the poisons from the comet's tail. Need I go any further? All right. It was all bogus. Even the scientists of the day knew that there was no danger from the tail of Halley's Comet, and the science did try to publicize the fact in newspapers, but scaremongering news reports always receive more attention from the public than a scientific news article. The same is true regarding Comet Ison. Today, viral YouTube videos and other social media and internet posts are drowning out scientific news articles, debunking the fear-mongering reports about Comet Ison. Astronomers have been watching Comet Ison for many months. The only question is whether Comet Ison will bring a bright, naked eye comet when it comes along to the sun, or whether it will fizzle out with spectacle in the sky. And there it would go. They are still not sure, so time will tell. All right, comets do not create solar storms. Indeed, if Comet Ison was completely swallowed up by the sun, which is still a possibility, the sun would hardly notice it. Comets are balls of ice, dust, and perhaps some small, rocky pieces which are much smaller than Earth. Which is debatable. There's a lot of other people who say differently. Um, and, and comment below some of you who know some of the others' work. If you want some other people to see some other information, definitely put the links below. Um, Adam, go to my message board on my website. Adam there, and uh, you can actually link full stuff up there. So, um, solar storms can occur at any time, but are usual are usually more frequent during the peak of the 11-year sunspot cycle. The sun is nearing the peak of the current sun cycle spot, so it would not be unusual for a solar storm to break out at this time. However, if a solar storm does break out at the comet the same time Comet Ison enters the sun around Thanksgiving Day, it would simply be a coincidence. I don't like the word coincidence. I never have. This one's going long, guys, for a news article. 11 minutes in. Much love, guys. I thank you guys for sticking with me. All the views. The channel's been doing a lot better lately. It's gotten a lot of the... Uh I've gotten a lot of staleness out, a lot of good things are going on in my life, things are moving forward, um, a lot of projects are starting to iron out, been playing music lately, um, just finally got over this cold, my birthday's coming up, I'm turning 33 years old, um, and I'm just having a blast with some of this stuff, not worried about ice, I'm really just uh, excited to get all the information I can. And uh, especially on the aspects of some of this ice on stuff, this will be the last thing I say. The uh, you know the metaphysical part of it, because I'm somebody I do I meditate and I do stuff like that. Um, I've always prayed and things along those lines. Not necessarily praying to whatever idol or whatever god or whatever thing. You know I I never really would go that did to it, but I always would you know look for strength in myself and. Uh, that way I've really been able to think so if I think if we all keep our heads and stay on the positive side of things keep keep thinking for that positive outcome for us for the world we're gonna get it you know there, we gotta go through some strife always there's always strife but uh, I guess what we really look at is what we bring into us as we walk down this road if we're gonna look at common ice on may bring negative death for the next the next month we might just think that and that'd be a month of scaring ourselves and doing research and I'm not saying don't do your research but uh, following people who maybe don't have your best interest at hand who maybe are pushing the fear a little bit more for monetary reasons for uh, popularity reasons things like that so anyway beware of what was that thing that was found on the uh, I think it was supposedly in the crop sucker beware of the bearers of false gifts Something along those lines. It's a pretty neat thing. I should do it. You know, I haven't done any crop circle videos. Would you guys be interested in that? Last question. Much love, guys. Hit comment. Like I said, it's been one of those nights. It's my Friday night for me. Uh, I got off tomorrow. Much love. Have a great weekend. I'll be around.